We are more than used to people jumping into our comments section and making some pretty spurious accusations about electric vehicles. We've had people claim that EVs give you cancer. They don't. And there's no evidence to suggest that it's even remotely true. We've had people claim that EVs cost more than gasoline vehicles because imaginary math. They don't, and Kate did an excellent video debunking a report claiming just that a few weeks back. Link below. And we've also had a whole plethora of other random accusations about electric vehicles and why they're bad that I'm not even going to delve into here. And look, if you are still doubtful, we have made a massive number of debunking videos that I'll link to in the show notes that cover some of the common ones. And do let us know if you see some particular egregious information that we haven't debunked yet that needs debunking. But one that comes up again and again in the comments section is the mention of EV battery pack replacement costs. The claim that most EVs will need a new battery every few years at the cost equivalent to the gross domestic product of a small former mining colony somewhere in the outer rim. We have again debunked this plenty of times. In fact, we have a video coming in just over a week's time talking about how most EV battery replacements are due to manufacturing and design issues rather than anything else. And when things do go wrong, replacement battery packs are usually covered under warranty. Unless, of course, you happen to be our videographer M, whose nearly 12-year-old 110,000-mile Chevrolet Volt became uneconomical to repair after an integrated component within the car's battery management system decided to fail and dealerships refused to replace the actual $5 component because that wasn't part of Chevrolet's official certified repair procedure. Yes, we hear... There's a video coming on that one as well. All in all though, the cases of EV battery packs needing expensive repair out of warranty are mercifully still very few in number. But then this story popped into our feed this week and the oodles of people commenting, emailing and pinging us via various technological means gave us all the idea that you might like us to cover it. <laughs> so who are we to argue? When you buy a new vehicle, the general consensus is that you won't have to worry about any major repair costs for the first three to five years of ownership, depending on exactly how long your manufacturer's bumper to bumper warranty is. And then if you own a plug-in vehicle, you get to benefit from a much longer warranty period that covers everything relating to your car's high voltage battery pack from the power contactors that engage to power your vehicle when you hit the start button to the charging system, the battery cells themselves and the battery cooling setup. Some automakers offer better warranty periods than others, with Hyundai Kia Genesis offering some of the longest and most comprehensive warranty periods out there. Yet last week, a story popped up online about a Canadian Hyundai Ioniq 5 owner who was being quoted 60,000 Canadian dollars to replace the battery pack in their 2022 EV. The reason? They'd hit an object on the road and Hyundai Canada wasn't having any of that. We first heard about the story via the Motormouth YouTube channel, which itself is based in Canada. It retold the tale we're about to share with you, and I should point out that the story itself is pretty basic with not a whole lot of detail. At this point, though, there are multiple different versions of this story doing the rounds, so I'm going to stick to the story as told by a local newspaper in Vancouver, BC, as it seems to have interviewed the driver firsthand. The too long didn't read is that Kyle Shu, a 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5 owner from Vancouver, BC, Canada, was on vacation with his Hyundai Ioniq 5 when he noticed that the car, quote, was not functioning very well, end quote, and decided to have his car towed to the local dealership to be checked out. What isn't discussed here is that if there were any strange warning signs on the dashboard or indeed what was meant by Shu when he said it was not functioning very well. And we'll come back to that a little later on in this video. 
His local dealership checked out the car and noticed that there were scratches on the underside of the vehicle, specifically on the large underbody shield that protects the battery pack and other underbody components from damage. The scratches appear to suggest the vehicle had hit something and the dealership technicians noticed that there was a larger than expected gap between the underbody shield and the battery pack itself. Initially, the dealership told Shu that his car's battery pack warranty would be voided because of the impact damage and said he would need to replace the battery pack at an estimated cost of around 30,000 Canadian dollars. However, after checking on the price with Hyundai Canada's parts department, the dealerships called him back and updated the quote to nearer to 60,000 Canadian dollars, installation included. Shocked at the quote, Shu then decided to get his insurance company involved. The insurance company sent out an adjuster and, on the basis of the dealership's findings, decided to write the car off. An almost brand new Hyundai Ioniq 5. Of course, naysayers all across the internet have jumped on this and it's already being used as a reason why we shouldn't be driving EVs. After all, what use is a car if it's going to be written off after hitting something on the road? Well, I'm going to come back to the matter of an in-road collision in a second, but first, let's give you some supplemental background information we've managed to glean after Hyundai Canada issued a public statement on the matter. Originally, Hyundai Canada was unaware of the incident and, in fact, didn't know about the impact until after the insurance company had become involved and decided to write the car off. That may have been unfortunate because, had the automaker known about the issue before this, it may have decided to jump in and offer to help Shu out, as it did a while back when a 2017 Hyundai Ioniq customer in Ontario, Canada, facing a 30000 Canadian dollar quote for a battery replacement after hitting debris on the road, took their story to the press and Hyundai Canada. After all, helping an owner out with a new battery pack, even if it's technically not in warranty, makes a better PR than a driver with a car the insurance has written off where there's nothing from the automaker to help them out. In this case, however, that doesn't appear to have happened and it's led us to question exactly what happened. First, we should, of course, send sympathy to Shu. Nobody likes having a car that's broken and it's even worse when the insurance has written the vehicle off. But also, I want to add that mm, something doesn't quite add up here. After it became aware of the incident, Hyundai Canada gave some extra information about the vehicle and the damage. According to its official press release, the battery pack's shield was hit hard enough that it deformed by 15 millimetres, or 1930 seconds of an inch for those of you who prefer non-metric units. Not only that, but the impact was enough that it caused a coolant leak somewhere in the battery pack's cooling system. And it was this, at least we can assume it was this, which caused the technicians at the dealership to specifically state the battery pack needed to be replaced. For those who don't know, the battery pack in the Hyundai Ioniq 5, like most modern EV batteries out there, uses active cooling to keep the battery pack warm during winter and cool during summer. It pumps coolant fluid through a series of pipes stamped into a bottom plate that sits under the battery pack, and in some cases, inside the pack. Usually that cooling plate sits under the cells within the battery pack, sometimes becoming part of the battery pack's structure, and sometimes sitting above the external casing. But here's where things don't add up. We haven't been able to ascertain at the time of filming if there were any warning signs that showed on the dashboard of the vehicle at any point, and we're not sure, as we've already noted, exactly how the vehicle was performing. That said, several news reports we have read suggested that there was cold weather on his vacation. And because we know where Shu was going, we have a bit of a theory that I'm going to come back to in a second. Before we get to that, though, let's deal with this battery cost estimate and the dealership's response to the service request. First, battery packs 
are expensive. And thanks to comprehensive battery warranties, which are usually required by law in most countries around the world where EVs are sold, they shouldn't be a concern for your average EV driver. Unless you regularly do the Kessel Run, most traction batteries have the potential to outlast the vehicle they are in. But as this story notes, the battery pack is not covered by warranty if something happens to your vehicle, such as an accident. And at this point, I feel it's worth noting that M's Chevrolet Vault, video is coming soon, I promise, also didn't start to misbehave until after it was rear-ended by another driver at the end of 2021. The insurance company at the time said the battery pack wasn't affected, but I'm still putting my betting chips down on it being the root cause of all of those battery woes that M has suffered since. The amount quoted by automakers to replace battery packs shows just how heavily many automakers are subsidising their new EVs, since economies of scale aren't yet ramping up to a level where EV battery pack replacement costs are truly cost effective. And even though companies like Tesla have a far lower cost of manufacturing, they're not truly affordable when it comes to out of warranty or aged out replacements. Again, while the majority of older Tesla Model S and X owners are, like other EV drivers, enjoying their car's original battery packs and don't have any concerns about range or pack deterioration, those who do need batteries replaced are getting equally high replacement quotes from Tesla as Shu got from Hyundai Canada. And because EV battery technology is evolving so rapidly, it's still a major issue for the industry as a whole. Because the number of EV battery packs being made versus the number of EVs being made is pretty equal. So there's not exactly a warehouse of spare available EV battery packs just sitting around waiting to become a replacement for somebody's car. But again, this battery pack issue seems to feel a little like M's battery replacement dilemma. The dealership wasn't about to go and open up the pack to see what was and what wasn't OK because their training doesn't usually include that kind of low level tech work. And it's more than their job is worth and frankly, the dealership's franchise is worth, to go doing stuff that's unsupported by the automaker. It is also far more economical from a service personnel point of view to ship off the old battery and install a new one. And then someone at the automaker, in the case of Shoes Car, Hyundai Canada, or perhaps Hyundai Korea, gets to see the removed battery and figure out exactly what went wrong. Because, believe me, things like this do attract the attention of head officers when they are aware of it. Back in 2013 or thereabouts, I rear-ended a Land Rover at low speed in my tiny Renault Twizy. And Renault UK was so interested in the accident, it was a low speed affair, but it twisted the frame, that they actually replaced my Twizy with an identical model just so that their engineers could take mine apart and gawk at how spectacularly I'd managed to twist the frame in a low speed impact with a massive Land Rover. The insurance company's decision to write the car off also wasn't exactly unexpected either. They're not battery specialists and they'll look at the cost from selling off the car as salvage versus the cost of paying to replace the pack as a very simple decision to make. In fact, personal experience when my 2005 Toyota Prius, which I had modified to become a plug-in hybrid, blew up its battery pack in 2009 for reasons that I was ultimately to blame for, the insurance adjuster that came out didn't bother looking at the car. He just looked at the remains of the battery pack through the rear window and then ticked the box on his form to say the car was written off. That bit then? Hardly surprising. But what is surprising is the whole story about the car and its mysterious accident. Shu doesn't appear to acknowledge hitting anything, and unless you're the world's worst driver with no attention to the road, you'd probably know if you hit something hard. At least, you'd know if you were driving at speed. And there are plenty of examples of EVs hitting things at speed that then had bad things happen to them because their battery pack was hit by a foreign body, known as a foreign body ingress event. And by the way, if, dear viewer, you happen to have something like that happen to you and you hit something when driving and it goes under the car and makes a clunking sound against the bottom, you should always pull to the side of the road when possible and safe to do so. Get everyone out of the vehicle and check the underside of the car. If you have doubts about your safety, 
get away from your car and call emergency services or a tow company. But let's also be clear, this could happen to an internal combustion engine vehicle too. Hit something just right under a gas car and you could rupture the fuel tank or a fuel line, which is equally as dangerous. In this case, given that Shu was heading to a ski resort for the holidays and that various news stories mention snow or cold weather, I'm going to make a very educated guess about what happened. I think Shu drove into deep snow or at least cold snow that had frozen in just a way that it hit the underside of the vehicle. All it takes is one stray peak of ice poking up and temperatures cold enough to make it rock solid and you could seriously cause damage even at low speed. Remember, ice carves mountains. Alternatively, large rocks hidden by a layer of snow could similarly cause damage to a car with a low enough ground clearance. The Ionic 5 has a 155 mm 6.1 inch ground clearance on paper, and all it would take would be a little bit of uneven snow or a poor quality road to cause that car to bottom out. Even at moderately low speeds, that could be enough to cause problems. Even the occasional speed hump or parking garage ramp might be enough to catch that car out if it was just positioned just right. Given that Shu says he didn't notice any scraping or impact though, I think my snow ski resort theory is the right one and I do have some experience of that. Last year we had to actually replace the front underbody plastic panel on my wife's Chevrolet Bolt EV after some particularly heavy snowfall. It actually broke that front piece. That said, I didn't know what happened so this is only a theory. Everything laid out where does this actually leave us? Well, first we should learn from this instance. Always call your insurance if you hit something while driving and you notice it. Being an attentive driver can help you avoid the impact at all in many situations. You can leave a larger following distance when there's potential for road debris or there's poor weather. And if you are in doubt about ground clearance, don't be a hero. Stop look and figure out if your vehicle will make it or not. Oh, and please do tell your insurance company exactly what happened. If you hit debris that fell off a vehicle in front of you and you couldn't really avoid it, that's one thing. But if you were off-roading a vehicle not meant for off-roading or you were treating your vehicle in a way that pushed it beyond its original manufacturer sanctioned limits, you'll likely void your insurance as well as your warranty. I'm sure by now that someone watching this will say, ah, but you're arguing for not driving in winter. But I'm not. I'm actually arguing for driving with appropriate care and caution, and that's something very different indeed. Are replacement battery packs too expensive? Yes, yes they are, but that's for another video. In short though, this was an outlier. We really don't know what caused Shu's car to hit something. That's really not the point right now but I do think there's more to this story than we currently know. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube. They help cover our bills, pay our team, and make sure that we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them, and of course see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for, from as little as just $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just under $11 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Nathan Plowman, Hanno, Bender, Estelle, and Sarah J. Goodfriend. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have a good old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at. The address is linked to below. And if you're in need of some swag, you should also check out our swag store in the down below too. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. Don't forget, we make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 
If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we think that this one is also worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving!